All right, so like Mrs. Grassle said, I'm Zach Cotter. Um, I'm the school resource officer both, for both the high school and the middle school. Um, the contact information is up here if you have any other questions that you think of when you get home or um, anything in the future. So jumping right in here, here are some topics that I'm going to cover today. So we're going to start with social media, which is a big one, um, resources, hidden apps, ICAC, which stands for Internet Crimes Against Children, and then some local real life examples. So jumping right in here, we got social media. So I could probably spend the whole half hour on social media alone, so I'm going to try to condense it a little bit. Um, but social media, the golden question is, what age should my kid get social media? Right? I think as a child or as a parent that has a child that's getting to that age for the first time, when should I allow them to have social media? Right? Because times have changed. Social media is huge. Um, and I, I'm going to be honest with you, there's no right answer, in my opinion. I think it largely depends on the child. Um, what the parent thinks, um, and at the end of the day, I don't think there's a certain age where you can say at 12, all kids should be able to have, you know, Facebook, because I don't think that's, that's how it should be, okay? So largely that comes out with parent and your opinion and how you feel that your kid um, would handle social media, right? I think when I was looking online, I think roughly it said anywhere from 13 to 14 uh, there's kind of a decent age to slowly start getting your, your child into some social media. Um, and I want to preface this presentation, I cover a lot of dark stuff here, um, but social media is not all bad, right? Obviously in moderation, um, but it can be a great resource to connect with friends, it can be great to connect with family, especially family that doesn't live around here, right? So Facebook, if you got grandma that lives in Texas, and you're able to send her pictures, you're able to post on Facebook so she can see what you're up to, I think that's a great aspect of social media. So contrary to some of the information that I'm going to cover here, there are some pros to having social media, right? Okay, so we'll start with Snapchat. So Snapchat, I was super impressed with their resources that they have for, for parents. Um, and if none of you have had Snapchat before, this website right here lays it all out. So it's called Snapchat 101. They have YouTube videos, they have slideshows, they have literally anything you can think of, and you will know exactly what Snapchat is by the time you're done with that website. So I was super impressed with how they had this laid out, and I think it is relatively new as well. Um, right alongside Snapchat 101, they have their safety checklist for parents. So right here, it kind of lays out everything that you need to take into consideration when you're setting up a Snapchat for your kid. Um, and I think one of the coolest aspects of this is the parental control that they had. Um, so you, as an adult, can set up parental control for your kid, so you can kind of see your friends, see your kid's friends, the privacy settings, um, and you can limit their um, accessibility to some of the um, content on Snapchat too, which I think is really huge and a relief off parents' shoulders if they're able to, you know, see exactly, you know, who your kid is talking to and make sure that. Um, they're speaking with people that they know. Um, I know another rule that Snapchat has too is if they register with a date of birth that makes them, I think 13 is middle age, you have to be with beyond Snapchat. If they register with their real birthday, they cannot friend anybody unless they have like at least three mutual friends with them. Right? So then that means strangers aren't just randomly adding your kid and that kind of, again, gives you that side of relief so that you know that your kid is, you know, behaving on Snapchat for the most part. Um, one other aspect that I wanted to touch on is the location. So I'm not sure if everyone's familiar here, but Snapchat is a, a location-based app, meaning that you have the ability to share your location with any of your friends, right? So you could do either you could either do live location, which shows your location at all points, whether you're on Snapchat or not, or um, the standard location, which just updates every time you open the app, Snapchat. Right, so it could say that I'm here if I'm on Snapchat right now, and then it would update in 45 minutes when I get home, and then it would show that I'm on Snapchat. So that's something to keep in the back of your head. Um, if you're thinking about setting up a credit account for your kids, is that they are allowed to share their location, and that's something you should probably monitor or at least have a, a conversation with. Okay, Instagram. Instagram also has similar um, aspects to Snapchat. So they have what they call as their family center. Um, and again, similar to Snapchat, is their education hub, which basically lays out everything you need to know about Instagram. Right? And their version of the parental controls is called supervision. So um, similar to Gold Guardian, you can actually set a time limit on you know, the accessibility to, to Instagram for your kid. Right? So if you are on the fence about letting your kid have Instagram, you can slowly start to integrate them and say, give them five, ten minutes a day, something small, something like that, right? which I think is a really cool um, part that they have here. Um, you can also see their followers and follow who they're following, and then also access their privacy settings, which I think is huge for parents. Another app here is Be Real. So show of hands, who knows what Be Real is? One. Okay, so Be Real is kind of a newer app. Um, so essentially, what Be Real is is once a day you get this notification on the bottom of the screen. So it says, um, "Time to be real. Two minutes left to capture a Be Real and see what your friends are up to." So once a day, 
Um, that pops up. When that pops up, you slide over, open up the app, and it, um, it requests you to take a picture of both like what's in front of your camera. So if you're doing homework on a computer, you take a picture of your computer, and then it takes a picture um, from the self view. So normally a selfie, is what they call it. Um, so something about this is that it's also location based as well too. So if your kid is not um, being very responsible of who's following them, you know, a stranger could access a lot of information based off their location and two pictures a day. You know, so over time, that, you know, that could be kind of dangerous um, as I know. And again, not all bad, but just something that you might want to have a conversation with your kid so they know what they should be looking for as far as, as, far as who's following them and who's able to access this information. So NetSmarts. NetSmarts is a really cool website. It's been around for a long time. Ton of really useful information for maybe the parent that's not quite sure what to do as far as um, social media and internet for the kids. Um, so they're the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and they have, I'm not kidding, videos, presentations, I mean everything that you can think of. And it's all free. So you can go on their website and you're able to download any of their presentations that they have for the parents and scroll through them. Um, I think the parent wanted like 40 to 50 slides. There's a lot of really, really useful information on there. Um, so definitely a very good resource for parents. Um, they also have a cyber tip line there that you're able to um, send in some information if there's some, something going online that should be reported. So really cool website for parents. Hidden apps. So does anyone know what a hidden app is? Raise your hands if you know what that term is. That's two here. Okay. So hidden apps, there's kind of two different forms. Um, and it's, it's kind of intriguing. So um, these are basically apps that are on your phone that are hiding what's behind the true app. Right? So I'll show you the two forms here. This is an example, this is Cloak. So Cloak, essentially think of a big folder, right? And say you don't want your kid to have Snapchat at home. Well, you can go in the app and tell it to hide Snapchat. And an interesting thing about Cloak is it, you actually have location services as well too. So that means when you're home, it'll take Snapchat and put it in this folder and it won't, it won't appear on the, on the phone at all. Right? And when you leave home, boom, it shows up on your phone. You're able to access it. So. Um, Definitely something that I wasn't even aware of before looking into this, but it, I mean, it's out there. Um, another example of that I'll show, so hidden app, so a hidden app could be this, right? And to anybody looking at this, it's a calculator, right? Like, awesome, my kid has two calculators on their phone, they're probably <laughs> doing really good in math, right? How do you count them? Okay, that's really cool. Okay, so you click on the app, and it brings you to this. A passcode? Who needs a passcode for a calculator, right? They should be you know, rewarding kids for having more than one calculator on their phone. But instead, you see a password, I've set the red flag. So essentially what this is, is you open it up, and it's not truly a, a, a calculator. It's what they call a photo vault. So essentially photos, videos, files can all be hidden in this app, and you never even know it by looking at it. You just think it's a calculator. You would never think anything of it. Um, I'm sure some. all of those pictures in there are appropriate. Yes. Too, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so some examples of those that you might see on the phones, um, normally they come with some sort of vault, some sort of safe. Um, key and file are common ones as well too, um, but those are definitely out there and I know very common. So two different types of um, hidden apps. And what he's talking about are, would be items that they can't get on a Chromebook. Okay, so we're not saying that you need to look on a Chromebook. This is more on the child's personal device where they can go through and get their own apps, just as clarification. And these are things that you're not going to find in their normal photo album on their, on their phone, right? These are just in this hidden um, photo vault, if you will, that's behind this app. So that's the only place that you'll find it on their phone is, is back here. Um, and I know there's other apps as well too as I was looking through it. Um, there's other apps that will hide like chat rooms or dating apps or other um, apps that you don't um, want on your kids' phones. Okay, so catching back up here. Um, jump into sextortion. So sextortion is something that's um, grown increasingly more common. Um, we deal with it all the time in the law enforcement world. So sextortion is, is essentially blackmail. So it's threatening to reveal sexual conduct in exchange for money and or sexu sexual favors. Excuse me. I'll give you one example. Um, I got called to a house once. Parents called. Um, their son had sent some inappropriate pictures to who he thought was a girl, similar age, um, at a different school. Right? And so he finds out as soon as he sends those pictures, this person now wants money. Send me money or your pictures are going everywhere. I'm sending all your friends and family, I'll post them on the internet, they'll be all over the place. Right? So essentially, what we found out is normally the suspects in these cases are from the Ivory Coast of Africa. Um, which makes it difficult, obviously. It's not someone local that we can just go hook up and bring them to jail. Right? That's, it's not that easy. But it's important to realize that even though these people are normally from Africa, there's still something we can do about it. 
right? So the U.S. Department of Justice is still actively working on these cases, and it's important that if this ever happens at home, um, to call and report it, because we can get some information from that, and we can report it, and it can be tracked down, and these guys can be prosecuted. So super important that if this ever happens, to give us a call and have it reported, okay? Um, and the last part is always have to keep the victim's mental health in mind, right? And going back to Mrs. Sajinsky's point, and in her part, her point was, you gotta have a good conversation with them, and they gotta be, they gotta feel comfortable to be able to come to you, right, and have that conversation. So at the end of the day, and I'll show you an example of this next, you don't know how they're feeling inside, right? This could be the end of the world to them. They could be so embarrassed, you don't know what they're thinking or what they might have in mind, right? So keep that, keep that in the back of your mind when you're having conversations. Um, and you know, what I told um, the gentleman that I talked to is it's a mistake. It's not the end of the world. It was one thing, it's a mistake, but we're going to fix it and move on. Right? And um, another point that I wanted to put on to, um, a lot of the times these pictures aren't being spread everywhere if you don't send these people money. Okay, I know there's examples that sometimes they do, but from what I've seen, they don't end up getting spread anywhere because that's a crime itself too, to spread child porn like that. So um, just something to keep in mind. So here's my example I was talking about. This is Jordan DeMay. So he lived in um, Michigan, right? Looks like your standard high school football player. You don't think um, anything of it. And so essentially what happened was he connected with a female um, through Instagram which is normally how this extortion cases start, is through some sort of social media. Um, so he connected with someone, some girl, that he thought um, was similar to his age. Um, they talked for a little bit, and then he exchanged some um, explicit photos with this girl, who he thought was a girl. Um, as soon as that happened, again, send me money, or these are going to all your friends, all your family. Um, and Jordan actually did send $300, and that wasn't enough. I don't know the exact dollar amount that they requested, but he did send some money, and it still wasn't enough. Um, and one thing I found out about this case was one of his friends was actually sent one of their compromising pictures, um, which I hadn't seen before. So, you know, and at the end of the day, all three of the suspects were all charged. Um, I know there was a series of crimes that they were all charged with, and they were all extradited back from Nigeria to Michigan, where they were prosecuted and essentially put in prison. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but he did die by suicide, which correct. is why yes. it, it was such a big deal. So this happened over a year ago. Um, actually, a good friend of mine, his family friends with his friend, he's, he was a, a really good hockey player and stuff, but he was so distraught over all of this um, that he, he took his own life because he didn't know what else to do because he didn't have anyone to talk to about it. Right? So his family is really doing a whole series of community-based education about this, want to get the word out that like this happens right? because a lot of people don't know about it. Absolutely. But it was just in the news recently, even though it was like a year and a half ago, which is really intriguing to me. Right? But why is everybody hearing about it now only because the Nigerian suspects were finally apprehended and being charged? Right? But it wasn't that big. Nobody really talked about it when it was happening. So. Right. And like I said previously, so Jordan saw this as the end of the world, not a mistake. And he didn't know where else to go, so he had unfortunately ended up in his life. So, um, Moving on, this is another really cool website that I found called Take It Down. Um, this was even new to me, but really cool. So it's a free service. Essentially what happens is if there's some sort of inappropriate picture that's out there of a minor, um, it has to be of someone under 18, um, you can go on this website and essentially have it taken down from the whole website, wherever it's posted. Um, so super cool. Only caveat with this is it has to be a service that agrees to participate. So three big ones that I found were Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, the notable one that's not on there is Snapchat, right? That would be the big one, and hopefully that's coming. I understand this is a relatively new service, but still a um, really cool website. And another cool part is you can be completely anonymous. Um, so I don't completely understand how they track that down. That's outside of my pay grade. But uh, as, I, as I was looking at it, you can be completely anonymous. I think they just need um, some sort of information from the picture. So whether it's a screenshot or something, and they're able to go in, find where it's posted on that website, and have it taken down. So something really useful to keep in the back of your head um, if you ever come across that. Okay, so sexting. Um, this kind of goes hand in hand with sextortion. So sexting is what happens before, obviously, the blackmail of sextortion. Right? So sexting is the act of sending explicit pictures or messages um, over the phone. Um, I think one thing that's is important to um, get across to your kids is that stuff's on the internet forever, right? It never completely goes away. It is always out there. 
Um, so definitely something to keep in the back of your head when you're using um, internet or social media. Um, and I know this is a very tough conversation. I know the kids don't like having this conversation, and I know parents probably don't enjoy having this conversation either, but it is super important to have one, um, especially around the sex thing, because like I said, nine times out of ten, that never ends well either. Anyways, you know, we all were constantly dealing with that in the law enforcement world as far as, you know, a picture or something that was put out there, and now it's being held against them, or it's being spread to their buddies, or, you know, something along those lines. Um, so as Mrs. Zajinsky said as well, um, another quote my mom always said was, if you don't want your grandma to see it, don't send it. Kind of a good reference point to keep, you know, in mind. Well, I think, like, in all of the time that I've been doing the job that I do, um, I think what we find is there's a lot of impulsive activity, like in middle school, kids will say, you know, send nudes or whatever, and they might share a, a picture of a body part, you know, and then they don't really think much about it until they get embarrassed, and then sometimes when they're later in high school, and that keeps resurfacing is when it becomes to be really tricky, because they're like, gosh, I can't get rid of that. Yeah, we told you that would happen, right? So that, that does happen quite a bit where kids think that everybody's doing it, but they're not. Right? So then they want to fit in and then they'll send something like that, not really thinking about long-term consequences. So it's really having those conversations is key. Absolutely. Okay, so ICAF, Internet Crimes Against Children. Um, most, most of you probably recognize him from the, the show um, To Catch a Predator, um, Chris Hansen. So that kind of reminds me of the ICAF crimes, an easy way to connect it in your brain. So ICAF um, crimes are essentially crimes where adults are attempting to solicit um, minors. So essentially we have, I know we have I think, two investigators at our Union County Sheriff that are dedicated just to take care of the ICAT crimes, which unfortunately are way too common. Um, essentially it targets offenders using online activity to sexually exploit children. Um, a lot of the times, obviously, adults specifically trying to locate kids. And like I said, it is so common, it's like fishing, it's like fishing in a barrel, right? There are so many out there, unfortunately, way too common. Uh, so some crimes associated with ICAC are sexual exploitation of a child, possession of child pornography, and exposing a child to harmful material, um, which would be sending explicit photos to, to minors. Um, and it doesn't always happen on chat rooms or social media. I know I have an example coming up here where um, it was done on like Craigslist or Skype or you know email. I mean, it's everywhere. Unfortunately, you really can't escape it no matter what. Okay, so here's some real-life local examples. Um, so on the right here, we have David Weaver. Um, David, went, David went by Sarah or Josh, depending on which gender he was talking to online. Um, so David's choice was Skype. Um, and, I, and I know when he was on Skype, he would either make up excuses as far as, like, his mom wouldn't let him have his camera on. Um, he was always blacked out. He didn't have audio at all. So he was completely hidden behind the camera kind of thing. Um, and what he would do is lure children into sending him um, sexually, sexually explicit content on there, which he would screen record and save. And I know he had, he was worldwide, I mean, anywhere. He had hundreds of thousands, I mean, they, there was so much on his computer. Um, so he was caught and sentenced. Um, but he was in Cedarburg, so right in Wisconsin here. Um, Mark Kemp's, he was in Appleton Mill. Um, Mark Kemp's used the app Whisper. Um, his, his name was Daddy on there. Um, so. How Mark ended up getting caught was he um, scheduled the meetup with a 16-year-old student at Seymour High School, um, which was really a police officer. So when that meetup went down, obviously he was taken into custody. When he was taken into custody, they realized that he had been meeting up with a girl, um, having sexual relationships, and she was 13 years old, and that had been going on for over a year, right? And that it was a Seymour High School student that he was planning on meeting up with. Um, so it, it's, it happens, and it's out there, unfortunately. Um, last example here is Joseph Valdez. Um, he's from Green Bay, and he um, went by Modeling Coach USA. Um, so, I mean, just disgusting, right? And his deal was basically that he pretended to be this modeling coach, and he needed new pictures of minors to try to get them to be models, essentially was what, what he did. Um, and he used the, the pictures and videos against um, children that sent him like, increasingly more sexual content. Right, so it was a form of sex extortion essentially. When he got something, he told them, all right, I'm going to post this everywhere unless you send me A, B, and C. Right, so just completely disgusting. And how he was caught was he responded to a Craigslist ad um, for a Seymour High School girl that was posting, um, looking for babysitting jobs. He had sent her an explicit picture right from the get-go. 
Um, so again, another CMOR student, right? So unfortunately, way too common and it's out there. And, um, so it kind of stinks to see the very local crimes, but I think it's important to get across that it's, it's actually out there. All right, so what can you do as a parent if something happens and they come to you? Right, I think probably what's most important is listen attentive and stay calm. And this may be hard because obviously it's a really big deal. Right? At the end of the day, if they trust you enough to come to you and tell you that this happened, it's important that they know you're there and you're listening to them. Right? Um, reassure them that it's not their fault. Right? Even though, like I said, it's a mistake. It's not the end of the world. We can fix this. We can move on. It's just a mistake. Um, answer any of their questions and help them with reporting it. So like I said before, as soon as you can, call local law enforcement and get it reported so we can get the information and um, start that process. So, like I said, at the end of the day, it's super important that you have that relationship with your kids. Right? Technology can't catch everything, so communicate. Um, you you got to have a good relationship with your kids. And it's important. I know there's a lot of resources on here and a lot of things that you can do as a parent to help that. But at the end of the day, it could sneak by, um, which is where your relationship with your kids will come in handy and definitely helps all that issue. So, any questions for me?